Now I think I know why most horror fans aren't hunters. I'm not saying all of them aren't hunters, but I think a lot of them probably aren't hunters. Let's review Prey. Prey stars David Cross, Hanno Koffler, Maria Einrich, and is directed by Thomas Seibin. What's up guys? It seems like Germany is starting to really make their mark in horror as of late. Uh, shout out to my, my good friend Simon Moon, by the way, who lives in Germany. But uh, if you remember, I reviewed uh, Blood Red Sky, the vampire on uh, an airplane movie, which I really enjoyed actually. It's in my top five of the year. Really good one that's on Netflix. Definitely check that out. But this one is called Prey. I had heard some rumblings about this movie. And uh, it's one of those movies, kind of like The Ritual, where you got these this group of guys, they're in the woods, and I guess the, the gimmick of this movie is they are being hunted by this mysterious shooter. This isn't a hunting ground anyway. Shit. What are they doing? I think they're trying to kill us. And as a matter of fact, somebody actually messaged me about this movie, and they flat out told me who the shooter was and, and I'm not upset with them at all because this was one of those you could call this a spoiler even though this is revealed I think in like the first act maybe beginning of the second act who the shooter is and in my mind there are two different types of spoilers there are ones that are you do not mention this whatsoever that is off limits stay away and then there are the type of spoilers that can actually make the movie a little bit more interesting because when this person told me what the shooter was then i was interested i had no desire to really see this movie before that but then when i found out who the shooter was okay now i'm interested so i think in order for me to effectively convey what i loved about this movie i kind of have to reveal that so from this point on uh i'm not going to tell you what happens at the end like that's the off limits do not go uh do not uh, dare trespass in this area. Yeah, you don't want to talk about the last act, okay? As far as like giving away what happens. But the gimmick of this movie is, I guess, the mild spoiler. So going forward, I'm going to talk about what that is, okay, for the rest of my review. So if you don't want to know who is hunting these men, then you can leave right now. But I will say that I think this movie is definitely worth your time just because of that and, and what transpires at the end of the movie. But having said that, I don't think this is going to take away from your enjoyment of the movie knowing this. As a matter of fact, I think it'll make you want to watch the movie even more, okay? So anyway, five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's press forward. So right out the gate, what is hunting them? It's a female. There is a woman that is severely pissed off. She doesn't say a single word throughout the movie and she's angry she's really angry about something and these guys have to pay all right i'm not gonna say if she actually knows who these guys are but it does kind of fall into my cons of the movie which we will get to but first let's talk about the characters i believe there are four guys correct me if i'm wrong maybe five that are on this trip but there's two that are really substantial that they really build their characters and they are brothers roman and albert and albert um, has a lot of pull. He, he works at this company and Roman is trying to make his way up the ladder. And, you know, his brother could really help him out. So there's this tension between the two of them. Also, there is this relationship that Roman is having with this woman and you're going to see flashbacks throughout the movie. And, and throughout, you're like, why do they keep showing these flashbacks? But then eventually you find out why because there is some conflict some drama between the brothers and this woman okay i'm not going to flat out tell you what it is but it plays a heavy part into the movie and it's good stuff because it's character building type stuff it makes you care about who these characters are almost makes one of them seem like you know the the selfish d-bag and the other one you really like and if you put two and two together roman is in the relationship with this woman He's the guy that I really like. You can probably figure out where I'm going with this. So first off, that's what I really loved about this. I like the tug of war between the two brothers in this movie. Also, this lady uh, who just shows up from time to time in the movie and, you know, she's hunting these guys, catches them really off guard. And I think this movie really shows you how dangerous it is being in the woods 
and how open you are to being killed, you know? Because these guys, they're standing in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, they could hide behind a tree, but if you don't know where the shooter is, you know, you might still be in harm's way. And there's this really interesting scene where they're going back to the car. You think, okay, now they can get out of there, they're gonna leave. This is in the first act. But you, you already know that even before they get to that car, uh, this shooter is going to come into play. And of course she does. From a directing standpoint, I love how these scenes play out, especially when the woman, she, she's usually like center of frame, you got a wide shot, and the music really sells, you know, because it's just very cold sounding. Come on, what do you want from us? Don't provoke her. Almost like the sounds that a, a killing machine would, would make. You know, this could be music that's in like a Terminator movie. Uh, just the sound of danger. Just imagine what the sound of danger sounds like in the most simple sense. That's what this music sounds like, and it's so effective, actually. So for that, I definitely recommend watching this on like a really good system. But also, I found this, this shooter, this lady, very interesting. I will say that there is like a tragedy that happened to her, and because of this tragedy, um, she's pretty much like Jason Voorhees with a gun. She, she will take you out if you are on her property. Also, before I jump into the cons, I really loved the last act. And to be honest, it's what saved the movie for me. Because up to this point, there are some, some dragging spots in the movie, you know? Uh, this is a movie that I feel like could have been shortened down quite a bit, honestly. Um, but that last act, I really think, sends it home because... Throughout most of the movie, a lot of these guys are just helpless. Uh, it, it's also kind of an issue that they don't have a gun, a weapon, but of course that could happen. You know, they're, they're just there on a hiking trip. So normally when you go on a hiking trip, do you carry a gun? I don't know because I'd, I've been hiking before, but I don't go enough to know whether you should carry a gun or not. So maybe you guys can let me know that in the comments because I can imagine that some of you probably have a problem with that. I don't know why they'd want to carry a gun on a hiking trip. That was kind of my mentality. But I did see some of the complaints after the fact where these guys would definitely have a gun. I wouldn't have a gun if I went on a hiking trip, just to be honest. So to me, that's fair game. But again, loved how, you know the, the final scene, how it was kind of... Uh, less action oriented even though there is some action in there and more cerebral and really this is the point where you get the most out of this this character this woman who is um you know damaged i kind of went over what the cons are in this movie how it is a little bit long-winded i don't think this is a movie that i'm going to be watching over and over and over even though it did kind of stay with me but when i compare a movie like this to similar premises like the ritual the ritual i think is much better and the ritual's just bigger. It just feels like a bigger movie. You got this crazy looking creature in the last act. And uh, this felt very small scale, which there's nothing wrong with that. I love small scale horror movies. You know, I think that genre benefits the most from low budget type fare. But even in a low budget, you got to throw a lot, you know, throw everything in the kitchen sink in there that you can. But that's not to take away from the, the greatness in this movie because I definitely liked the, the, the characters, the relationship between the brothers, and especially liked the killer. I love that she didn't really say a word throughout the whole movie too. I thought that was pretty cool. So I'm going to give this a, a, a high humdrum. It's almost a Purgis Worthy, but it definitely has its problems. I think because of the rewatchability value of it, that's going to kick it down a bit. But uh, still, I think I would highly recommend it to you guys. It's on Netflix. Definitely check it out. Also, be sure to come over to Kill the Flicks, where we talk horror all day and every day. And on Fridays, we do Free Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums on all my socials. Support me on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Drum Dum out.